I drove from Salina, Texas up to South Maid, Texas to answer a Facebook marketplace ad for this mid-century clock. Um, it was in very rough condition, but I thought it was a good candidate for restoration. So I drove up there and I paid the gentleman $40 for it. I believe that this was uh, probably kept in a garage or a barn uh, for at least 20 years, and there's some evidence of that that I'll share with you when I get into the video. Uh, the uh, process is a little bit long video-wise, so I've split this into two videos. They're 15, 20 minutes long each. So I hope you'll hang in there, and uh, so let's get rolling into part one here. All right, let's have a closer look here. Uh, the cabinet itself is in pretty good shape. It's uh, a veneered uh, wood of some kind. I don't see any splits in the veneer, which is nice, but it's dirty. It feels rough, so we'll give it a little light sanding and probably restain it. Uh, looking at the dial here, it's in good shape. It's dirty. I hope I can get it cleaned up without affecting this paint here. It's a stamped piece of brass, it looks like. So I'll try to carefully clean up some of these little blotches here. Maybe some uh, simple green or something like that will do it. Looking at the... Uh, the top of the case, this is probably the biggest problem that I've got right here. We have a, uh, a nice piece of brass trim that goes around the top and also the bottom. And uh, it has lifted up here. It looks like it caught on something. The little nails are there, but we should be able to get those out and uh, re-secure this. But I'll have to be careful because this brass is almost like a foil. So this receipt was taped to the top of the uh, clock. Uh, the clock was serviced in uh, Mount Pleasant, Texas at the clock shop in 1999. So 23, 20, two and a half years ago, uh, Bill Woolley had this clock serviced. And uh, he paid uh, to clean and oil $50, and it says glass six. So I don't know what glass was worked on or replaced, but there it is, $56.50. So it's taped to the top of the case, which makes me think that somebody had it serviced and then they uh, brought it home and put it in the barn. And All right, so let's look, have a look at the uh, inside uh, here. We've got the pendulum. It's a little bit corroded here. We'll try to get that cleaned up and uh, we'll set that aside. And then we have the, the pendulum, I guess you'd call this extension here, and it's got a twist to it, which it's supposed to have, but it's also bent a little bit. And I think that Somebody moved this clock with the pendulum still attached, and so it, it was bent. So we'll just set that aside, and, and we'll straighten that out when we set the clock back up. And, uh, you know, the first thing I'll do here is uh, I'll take the suspension spring out, and uh, it'll have to be replaced because it is broken. One of these is, is broken, but uh, I think I've got a spare, so that's not a big problem. So our movement is an FHS, and it has a 65 on the top, and it's a movement number 141-030. Uh, the movement has, uh, just looking at it quickly, there are three hammers here for the chime, and uh, it's a little gummed up. It doesn't really want to run, so I have a feeling it'll come back to life pretty easily. So it just uh, counts out the hour, Kind of a pretty chime, I think. So before we go after the uh, movement and back, we'll take the hands off here. These uh, hands are made of, looks like solid brass. They're a little bit, uh, they're a bit tarnished, so we'll have to clean those up. I believe those are solid brass. I'm almost hesitant to remove the dial, uh, but these little pins here, they're just little brass pins. I mean, I can pull them out with my fingers. They're not in there very tight, so it should be pretty easy to get them out. I hope I can get them back in again here. So we'll take all those out. There's about eight of them, I guess. I hope I don't lose any of these. I don't think they sell these at the big box stores. Maybe they do, I don't know. All right, so that's the little nails out. 
Okay, we'll set that aside and uh, try to clean it up later. And you can see that the veneered front here, there's uh, some discoloration there. So we'll do what we can do to get that straightened out. It may just need a, a, a light cleaning, maybe just a little bit of stain. And then our uh, logo here is, it's also brass and it appears to be stuck on here. So we'll see if we can get that cleaned up. And it says made in Germany down here as well. And I'll see if I can brighten that. This is something I haven't seen before. Uh, the uh, movement is attached to the case here with eight screws. And uh, at each one of these little ears here, there's a little piece of metal to, I guess, to make it stand off of the case here just a little bit. It's just a piece of uh, steel rod, so I'll have to hold on to those. That'll be a, a little tedious getting that back together. So we'll just go ahead and get the screws out and take the movement out. Okay, we got one more screw. And we should be able to remove the movement at this point. Whoops. <laughs> Some of the screws fell in there. Just looking inside the case here. It's interesting. There's a couple of numbers here. There's a, looks like a logo and an 06. And then I see a 65. So I'm guessing that that is a, a match to the year that the movement was made, 1965. So while I've got it here, I'm going to go ahead and take the glass out. Um, it looks to me like it's pretty dirty. And I wonder if this is the $6 piece of glass that got replaced. I guess I'll never know. So there was a backplate on this clock at one time, but there are these uh, cleats or dogs. I, I call them dogs that uh, go over the top of the wood. So I'll have to uh, make a new backplane for this as well. When I took it out, uh, it's trying to tick away. So I think that the gear train's probably in pretty good shape. Probably has been sitting since 1999 after it was last serviced. It has spider webs on it. I don't see a lot of grease on the gears, but they do look very dry. So we'll have to, of course, lubricate everything. One thing I noticed was that uh, there are three hammers. Two of them are tied together. These chime the hour here. And uh, there's a little problem here with uh, the spring that returns the single hammer. It should have a spring that helps it go back to its home position, but I don't know if you can see it, but the spring is like, it's out of place and it's up here against uh, this uh, mainspring barrel. So the first thing we'll do is uh, let the tension off of the mainsprings here. All right. I think that's the time train. Now we'll take care of the chime train. And that's so good. So some of these movements, and I hope this is one of them, you can take the, uh, the, the click mechanism off and you can slide the barrel out. I don't know if this clock has that feature. I hope it does, because it'll allow me to do a better job of cleaning the innards on it. So we'll take that off. Take that off, set it aside. And then here's the uh, little sprocket there, and drum roll please. Nope, this one does not come out of here. Sometimes these arbors will slide out of here and you can get the barrel out. And so on this movement, because it's not really broken, I, I am not going to take everything apart on it. Uh, it's a kind of a pain to get them back together, and I don't want to risk hurting anything. Well, I was wrong. Uh, on this chime side here, the arbor does come out, and I think it should come out on this side also, but for some reason it's kind of wedged in there, so I'll have to mess with that a little bit. But I want to take the spring out. Of well, I can't get that spring out of there unless I get these hammer uh, arbors out of the way. So I'm going to loosen the plate a little bit. There's the little nuts on there, and I hope... So I've loosened a couple of the screws on this, or the plates, and I'm gonna remove this one on this corner here. Hopefully I can get it apart far enough to get the hammers out. Uh-oh, something just fell in there. Okay, so there's one of the hammers.
and it's like a Rubik's cube getting it in and out of there. And here's the other one. All right, good. Now I should be able to get that spring can out of there. Boy, that uh, arbor spring is like in the way. And there it is. So we've got that one out of there. All right, let's see if we can get this other arbor out of here. It's just kind of stuck in there. So we'll just get some pliers on it. Oh, there we go. All right, we got it out of there. Set that aside and the number 10 mainspring is out. It looks pretty good. So before I forget, I'm going to make a diagram here to, uh, so there's the butterfly. I'm gonna make a diagram to remind me of which spring goes on which side. This is the number 11 and that's a number 10. So that's uh, one of the chime hammer springs that returns it. So it's a little bent. I'm gonna see if I can get that fixed here real quick. I'm not gonna do anything fancy here. And that looks pretty good. I think that'll work now. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the verge arbor here so that I can uh, freewheel the time train as I get it cleaned up here. So we'll take that out of there. Uh, so there's the end cap, we'll set that aside. And there's the arbor and it has just a tiny little bit of uh, wear, but not too bad. I don't see missing metal. It just needs to be cleaned up. So we'll set that aside. And now we can freewheel the, uh, the time train gears and get those cleaned up. And they're a little bit noisy. And just looking at them here, I can see that Whoever did this last time really didn't clean them up. There is some old grease in here, and so we're gonna give this a good cleaning here before we put it back together. Some professionals would be very critical of me not completely taking this thing apart. And I have done that on occasion, but I don't like to do it if I don't see that any major repairs are needed. And this clock, the pivots look good. I don't see anything that's damaged other than the one thing I've already corrected. So what I'm doing here is I've got a little bath of mineral spirits and I'm just gonna go through and uh, make sure I get all the gunk out of the, uh, the pinions down inside here. So I'll just uh, exercise the movement and I'll just make sure that there's no grease gunk at the pivots or on the gears. And there is a little bit, not much, but there is a little bit. This is just an acid brush, they call it. And it's kind of got a stiff bristle to it and it's good for getting down in those gears. And I'll keep messing with this until they are completely clean. So it's actually pretty clean. You can tell there's a little bit of debris in the mineral spirits. So that's what's coming off of the movement. So this one is really not too bad. A lot of times I have all kinds of junk down in there when I'm done with this. So this is a thing I do. This is a bamboo skewer such as you can get uh, at any grocery store. They're like $3 for a hundred of them. And what I'll do is I use the tip of this, which is quite strong, and I will go through and I'll just kind of run it uh, in between all the teeth just to make sure there's no gunk in there. Uh, with these movements, these small gears are the ones uh, that I think are most important. They're all important, but these in particular will stop your movement if they're not you know, very clean. So I'll go through and I'll hit all the pinion teeth and uh, then we'll go to the ultrasonic bath. All right, this is my ultrasonic cleaner. It's got a cocktail of solvents in it, and uh, I'm gonna run this thing for 30 minutes or so, set it in there. I'll go in and have a cup of coffee, and you can see some of that stuff coming out of there right away. All right, we had about 30 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner here, and then we soaked for another hour or so. Squirt it down, and then we'll let it dry out. Well, if you've made it this far, I just want to congratulate you and thank you for hanging in here. Um, this ends part one, and uh, in part two, we're going to finish this thing up and get it back together. So I hope you'll watch that one too.